Hello, and welcome to the show. I am back on Forza 7 today, building another car to take on our Rallycross course. That vehicle is the Abarth 124 Spider. I really do quite like the car. While on Forza, it might not be a massively fast vehicle, certainly from standards, I do like the look of the Abarth, certainly. It won't be to everybody's tastes, but I think it is a great looking car, and I think in this series there is potential for it. It is fairly small, fairly light to start with, and plenty of room for upgrades. You might hear some clonking around going on on the floor. Cass has got a hold of a bit of cardboard and is currently batting it around like a lunatic. Apparently it is cat playtime, just as I go to start recording. He'd been perfectly asleep up there. Either way, I apologise if there's clonky, clonky cat bouncing around. <laughs> Upgrades! Let's go to the upgrade shop, shall we? Now, in this series, all of the vehicles must be all-wheel drive. And that will put the weight up a bit on this car. But it's only to £2,600. And we will probably be able to get that uh, weight back off. It must give it standard engine if it can get to the top of S-Class. But I'm not sure what this... Uh, I'm not sure what this standard engine can do. And more importantly, how much PI I am going to need to get to the top of S-Class. Now, while, yes, we are running a rallycross course. There will be some dirt involved. A fair portion of it, a large majority of it, is going to be on tarmac. And it's... A pretty damn fiddly tarmac circuit, to say the least. So we are going to want some big race tyres. Uh, interestingly, that is actually dropping the PI down. But uh, I'm going to want big tyres. Uh, yep, yeah, sure, it's all-wheel drive. It's going to have good traction and everything. But still more grip at the rear. Going to be useful. We're going to want some nice race suspension. And likewise, you know, all of these upgrades. When we've got so much PI to play around with, like we do in this car... I'm going to want all of these bits and pieces. I'm going to want a full roll cage and the weight. We can hopefully drop back out again. We can, down to about £2,400, which is not too bad. In certainly not too bad in terms, of, uh, in terms of weight and in terms of vehicles that have run in this series. I will go stick a diff on the car. Now, engine time. Are we going... Oh, that's nearly 100 PI. <laughs> 42 horsepower is nearly 100 PI. That's a lot. Are we likely to be seeing this get to the top of S class? I mean, it might be a little bit close. Uh, we will have to wait and see slightly. It's not going to be 800 horsepower in this car. Okay, this isn't going to be running the uh, the old 800 horsepower that's okay, you know, we, we will expect there to be varying levels of, uh, of power. When the vehicle is this light, I don't think we can do it. I don't think we can. I think we are going to have to swap the engine out. I am afraid it's just not going to get the power. With the remaining upgrades that has, unless like intercooler or whatever does a silly amount of... No, it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> seven horsepower. Right, okay, that will have to be sort of... We'll get to S, but it won't get to the top. Now, our options in all of this. We can have the quad rotor. Because why wouldn't you want the quad rotor? But that's far too high a PI. We can have the V8, or we can have the 3.7 litre V6. I think I might go for the V6 in this one. It's a little bit, only a smidge lighter, and it isn't as light as the standard engine. But I think we will go with the... Uh, with the V6. Now we could do an aspiration swap. We could give it a couple of turbos if we wanted. I'll see what I can do with the engine standard uh, before we decide on going for any of any of those kind of conversions. Now we will be able to save some weight as we go through here. Uh, we'll be able to save weight with things like exhaust and so on. Uh, up to 432 horsepower now in my uh, Abarth Spider. Yeah, we'll probably make this work with the car naturally aspirated and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. There's going to be a decent, a decent haul of power <laughs> to this engine. And power to weight ratio, not going to be the two and a half second to 60 time that we saw from the Jeep. But that's a pretty ludicrous car, let's be honest here. That's a pretty crazy vehicle. Uh, <laughs> not many cars are able to do that. So we're actually getting up towards 600 horsepower, which is a little bit more in many ways than I was uh, expecting to be getting. Right, okay, it's going to be get the cask. Can you stop batting around with wires? You're in a right 
uh, you're in a right want to distract me sort of a mood. Hold on a second. He's managed. He's managed to tear the bit of cardboard in half. You've made two toys out of this bit of cardboard, and yet you've now gone to try and bat some wires. There you go. Have a bit of cardboard. Uh, <laughs> bloody cats. <laughs> Bloody cats indeed. Uh, anyway, I digress. Upgradey bits. We can save a little bit more weight. We're actually down to almost about the same weight as we were with that uh, standard engine in the car. We've now got considerably more power. It is still nice and natural. Well, I say it's still nice and naturally aspirated. In fact, the above isn't naturally aspirated to begin with. But it is now naturally aspirated with, yeah, over 550 horsepower. If we have the control in this car... We might be pretty good. I don't know whether it'll be enough to beat the Subaru. However, it might be a pretty solid contender. So, uh, we are off to the Virginia International Raceway South layouts with my own little rallycross additions, if you like. The Abarth is going to have five laps to try and go as fast as possible, with the target being to beat the Subaru Impreza. A 114.3 is still the fastest time here, and it is, well, proving to be a hell of a tough car to beat. Now, if we can get into the 14s, hell, if we can get into the low 15s, we'll probably be doing pretty well. In fact, the 15, well, there are five cars separated by a tenth of a second between fourth and and eighth all in the 15 ones and twos it's a very crowded table we have going on certainly of all the build series i've done in forza games this is the closest the closest that we have seen by quite some margin so little differences are very important indeed and the bath i think stands a decent enough chance uh, with it being, you know, fairly light, actually fairly powerful. Certainly should have the acceleration. It's what it can do through these corners that's going... Ooh, don't get on that curb. Silly place. Uh, <laughs> what it's capable of doing through these corners is where things are going to be uh, to be interesting. That was nicely done, actually, over that crowd. I thought I'd break it a little bit early, but no, that's uh, pretty much where we wanted to be. Oh, we're all wrong through there. Ooh. Okay, that the front end gets changed direction very, very well on the dirt. It's actually a little bit understeery on the tarmac. But when we put it on the dirt, the front end really snaps around, which is nice. That was very close to plumping the tyre bundle, but never mind. Oh, not quite got that one sorted out so well there. <laughs> That's fine. Again, this lap kind of less than point. This is just sort of a learning experience lap, if you like. Oh, well, that's too much speed through there. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a learning experience lap. Uh, the tyres are a bit cold for the first part of it, and it's not a proper flying lap, so it will never be a uh, never be a quick one. So you're worth just throwing the car around in places and seeing what you can and can't uh, get away with. That's 19-0. Not considering that was a bit, say, a bit quite scruffy in places. 19-0 actually not a terrible opening opening lap. Uh, we're going to be a little bit early on the brakes, because I'm not... Oh, God, yeah, okay, early on the brakes is a good idea, because I'm not sure I 100% trust this car to uh, get slowed down, and that was with good reason. Uh, no! Bad, 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 bad things have gone on there. Oh, I, thought I, was, I thought I was good to jump on the power out of turn one, and, I mean, it was almost right, it was just a millimetre the wrong side of the curb, or maybe, maybe a couple of centimetres, let's be honest. Uh, the wrong side. Didn't really get the grass, thankfully. We kind of rode the curb, but it was enough to upset the back of the car. And, well, there we go. That is uh, that. Is that. Oh, that's... Uh, it's an interesting line through the uh, through the tyre bundles. Again, that change of direction on the dirt is remarkably good. I think while that will be good for carrying... Could be good for carrying speed. I've got to be careful that I don't kind of use it too much. Start at the back end sliding and then waste a lot of time with the car going sideways when it could be uh, trying to go forward out of a corner. For example, around the final turn we go. Oh, that's a big wobble. It almost feels, it almost feels like the front of the car ever so slightly lifts up as we got to put the power down. It's not kind of like a, a big old jelly car, but I don't think it's, you know, it's not actually lifting a front wheel off the ground, but it feels like it's lifting up enough so that if we hit a curb or we hit something a little bit wonky, it's just enough to uh, upset the uh, upset the vehicle. So I'm going to have to be mindful of that. Now, that's not a problem that I'd expect 
from a sports car such as this one. You know, we've got the race suspension on the car. I'm surprised, to say the least, that that is something that the Abarth is struggling with, but there we go. That's what it, uh, that's what it feels like. We might be a bit wide on the way in to the uh, hairpin, I think, here. Oh, uh, yeah, we're wide on the way in. That was me getting a bit carried away with the uh, <laughs> old grab the handbrake and chuck it into that corner. It's not quite, uh, not quite worked there, although it's better. It's still not amazingly fast through that left-hander. It's, again, we're talking about average in terms of speed through that uh, left-hander. It's not making any records. What is it going to be? It's a 15.6 from the Abarth. I think there may be a little bit more speed in that as well. Don't, it's, it's not got Subaru beating speed, not unless I find that magic lap again. Uh, <laughs> But I think there is a little bit more, so hell, it might have another 15, 15 one sort of a time in it if we get every. Because bear in mind that that lap was also set with the car having a huge wiggle on the way out of the uh, final quarter. And I think a little. Okay, let's not make any silly mistakes. Not make any silly mistakes with the car. Be patient around turn one here. Don't try and jump on that throttle too soon. Otherwise, we end up on that exit car. I mean, we want to use all of the circuit absolutely where we can, but don't jump on the throttle too soon and run the risk of hitting that uh, exit curb, hitting the grass. Now, let's try and not lose the back end on the way into the dirt section. Now, this is where things went a little bit wrong. I didn't really get the car across well enough. That's better. We've carried a bit more speed on our way out here. Oh, I think I'm wide on the way in. Now, you can sometimes recover these ones from, from being quite wide on the way in with a better exit. Now, see here, we're straightening it up a lot more. Rather than the big sliding around, we have straightened the car up, although you then end up slightly risking clonking the dirt around the next part. We are slightly up in terms of the split time. It's good through the fast left-hander. Just two more corners to go here. Don't drive in too deep. We can get away with... Just, that's the limit of what you can get away with. I got away with it in the Subaru. Can we get away with it in the Abarth? Is there going to be any time found? There is! It's a 15-3! <laughs> oh, 15-3. Well, it seems my audacity has done a real number on all of this. Either way, either way, back to the Abarth's lap time because, well, it did complete its, uh, <laughs> complete its run. A 15.3 is a pretty solid time around here. At the end of the day, it goes into that very, very crowded section of the table. Yes, it does lose out a little bit. Only, I say, only manages ninth place overall. It's just two tenths of a second away from the skyline up in fourth. So... Yeah, it's, it's all very, very close. It's a very crowded table here. It beats the Mitsubishi Evo 10, the Quattro, the Lincoln Continental, the Dodge Omni, and so on. It's a tenth down on the likes of the Lancia 37 and the Sierra Cosworth. It's just about there, though. It is It is just about there, indeed. Uh, overall, pretty nice car to drive. Uh, the front end getting changed direction very quickly can be a positive. Can catch you out. If you can work with it, you can get some decent speed out of the car. Uh, but yeah, is it possible to uh, catch you out a little bit? Uh, the brakes, perhaps not quite what I was hoping from the car. Not bad, but might have been hoping a little bit better. That, though, is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye. <laughs>